What's up, everybody? It's your boy, Billy Mack, back for another Boys Only Podcast. And, um, yeah, man. Just like in episode one, this team, boy, this team does not know how to evaluate their own players. Excuse the sounds. Getting myself situated around here. This team does not know how to um, evaluate its own players. I mean, I'm multitasking right now. I got a lot going on. I'm bare. I, I it was it was it was do the podcast while I'm doing this, or it's not going to get done. So, um, but regardless of how you, of what I'm doing and how you feel about it. Um, like the problems. So, so if you're a cowboy fan, I shouldn't have to go over this with you, but if you're a cowboy fan and you, um, and you haven't, uh, what you call it? Heard all the news that's been going on with with the front office, then I'm going to need you to crawl under that rock and and pay attention. Because this team, first of all, the elephant in the room, Randy Gregory. Um, Randy Gregory. So so listening to 105.3, the fan, a lot of them believe that Randy Gregory did this um out of um no I take that back it wasn't Randy Gregory it was his agent that uh ultimately um had a problem with with what was going on and and you got one side saying they told the Cowboys to change the language. They didn't. You had another. You had the Cowboys side basically saying they never had a chance to change the language. Regardless of what it is, the Cowboys look really, really, really bad on this. They look really bad to give up Randy Gregory. Now, um... I mean, for some people, it's either glass half full or glass half empty. You either it's either Randy Gregory, um what can I say? Either Randy Gregory is Denver's problem now, or Dallas, you really just lost one of your best players. That's the elephant in the room. That's that's number one. That is number one. Number two, Demarcus Lawrence. Now, if, if some of y'all probably didn't hear that interview either, some of y'all probably didn't hear that interview either, but that interview, he basically said, you know, if y'all don't want to pay me what I'm owed, then y'all can just cut me and I will go find somebody to – uh play with and then Steven so Steven lowballed him first they asked for a pay cut I have no problem with the Cowboys asking for a pay cut because if they ask for a pay cut essentially what you're doing is your due diligence hey would you take a pay cut if you don't it, listen, and my wife has taught me to do this. If you don't ask, you'll never know. You know, and and so so if Demarcus Lawrence feels disrespected by them asking for a pay cut, bruh, get out your feelings. Now, what he should and probably is disrespected by was the low ball offer when they came back the second time, and that low ball offer was like, and that's when Demarcus was like, yo. If y'all don't want me here, just cut me. Because this this contract y'all trying to give me is disrespectful. And that's when Steven started rummaging around and, oh, oh, 
<laughs> and that's when Jerry got on the phone. Oh, Demar, Marcus, Demarcus. Uh, 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 now, Demarcus. Now, we, you, you are a valued member of the Dallas Cowboys, and we just, we just really want you. And and whatever you need, we gonna give it to you. Okay, Demarcus. That's all. I mean, I don't understand what Stephen is doing. I mean, but I, I understand that you, you, you know, you, you are very important to this team, and 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 we. we 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 going we going to sign this contract and I hope you will and you did and you will cuz you want to and and everything is going to be all well and good for for uh you DeMarcus so just uh go ahead and and, and tell Stephen what you need and we will go ahead and and uh get this signed and and then we'll go ahead and uh, play some football this 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 training camp I mean he just it was like Steven, all Steven had to do was get Jerry on the phone and Jerry was going to seal it off, which makes me go back to Randy Gregory because basically the story is Jerry got on the phone, told Randy what it is, and Randy was like, cool. And that's why on social media you saw Randy Gregory sign, Randy Gregory sign, Randy Gregory sign. And then all of a sudden, they started, and the Cowboys have done this in the past. So, so this is not nothing new. I rem- they've done this in the past. Brandy was just the first one to be like, nah, we ain't doing that. But after Randy agreed, then they wanted to come in and change some stuff. Now, and it's really not even change anything. They wanted to add stuff to the contract. And so the story goes, when they tried to add it to the contract, the agent, Randy's agent was like, oh, why are you adding this in the contract? And that's when Steve and them were like, Oh, this is in everybody's contract. Except for Dak Prescott. And that's what pissed Randy off. If the whole team had that language in their contract, I think Randy Gregory would be a cowboy right now. But because we know, because the contracts are public, that's public knowledge. You can look. You can look up. You're going to have to do some research, but you can look up what's in a player's contract. If you go and look up Dak Prescott's contract, he does not have that language in his contract. And that's what set Rand. That's supposedly what set Randy off. Not to mention insider knowledge, but like I said, if, unless you've been hiding under a rock, you should know this. Uh, Randy's agent is based in, in Denver, and ironically, that's the first team that wanted him or the most aggressive team. There were other teams that wanted him, but they were the ones that were willing to match what Dallas was giving him. So, <sighs> you know, it just, it is what it is. It is what it is, but hey, I just, I'm just a fan. So with that said, Randy then goes to um, Randy then goes to the Denver Broncos. So now we have all this cap money and we don't know what to do with it. That makes no sense at all. You go sign somebody. Von Miller was there. I think they lowballed Von Miller. Mind you, Von Miller is in his 30s. He's clearly not the guy that, that that won that Super Bowl. I think it was 2015, 16, 15, somewhere around there, 14, 15, 16. He's, he's not that guy anymore. He's effective, but he's not that guy anymore. And, and, in actuality, he's more like playoff Rondo now. He might not do much during the season, but come playoffs, he shows up, and he shows up in a big way. Um. Okay, we got that downloaded. Now, now I can pay attention to y'all. <laughs> but yeah, man, this this is Yeah, Von Miller couldn't get him. I would have rather wanted Chandler Jones, but he he ended up getting signed like that. Um 
because he's only been like one of the most consistent defensive ends since he since he played with the Patriots. But it is what it is. I'm trying to think. Then okay, so now we're at Zadarius Smith. So Zadarius Smith and per Brian Broadus, one hundred five three the fan. Shout out to him. One of my favorite people to listen to. Um, Broadus. Did his research, and he basically said, so we all know Zadarius had a back issue. Zadarius had a back issue, and then after that back issue, other than the back issue, he's been pretty good. So we got in touch. So Brian Broaddus got in touch with his people. Turns out the back is just fine. So why aren't we getting Zadarius Smith? Personally, from a personal standpoint, I was thinking scheme fit. Maybe he didn't fit what the Cowboys were doing defensively. But uh, per Brian Broaddus, a lot of these, it, it's, not about, it's not about scheme fit anymore, especially since the NFL is, has completely turned into a passing league. We, most teams, you might run, you might have a base of a 3-4 or 4-3, but most teams are running hybrid because most teams know they're going to be in the nickel. Nine nine times out of ten. The simple fact that we, you know, when uh NBC or Fox or CBS does the starting lineups, I don't know if you all have noticed, but most of the most of the starting lineups, they only have two linebackers now. They have two linebackers and three cornerbacks now. There was a time where it, I think maybe in the last maybe two or three years where they would actually show the um they would actually show the um, all three linebacker positions and the slot corner. But now it's only two linebackers and the slot corner now. Um, at least in the games I watch. Maybe they still maybe they're still doing that. Maybe that's a team thing. So it's by need be basis, but that's just what I've seen. So Cowboys need to get Zadarius Smith. Uh, personally, one or two year deal. Most of it guaranteed. So, you know, or do like they did Amari Cooper and give him avoidable year. But um, I don't think you can sign him short uh, long term. Now, if he's looking for long term, I'm gonna tell y'all right now, Cowboy fans. If Zadarius Smith is like, I'm only signing unless it's a long term deal. They're not signing him. I think one of the reasons they didn't sign Von Miller because Von Miller was looking for a long term deal. I don't think the money had anything. But even though the Buffalo Bills, man, let me. In fact, let's look up his contract right now. Let's look up his contract right now. Uh, let's see. Contract. Okay. Six years. Six years, $120 million. Ain't no way. Ain't no way. Ain't no way. Six years, a hundred and twenty million. That's twenty million a year. That's twenty mil. That's that's twenty million a year, and he's thirty two. But he's not gonna. Wow, the bills. The Bills are going for it, man. Oh, my goodness. The Bills are going for it. Next year, Vaughn is only going to get $1.3 million. After that, 17 And after that, 17 After that, 19 And then his last year is $29 million? Now, granted, 45 of it is guaranteed at signing. Wow. Wow. So, 
the Cowboys, I'm going to tell you right now, the Cowboys weren't paying that. Oh, no. Cowboys, Cowboys were not paying that. I can almost, I can guarantee you the Dallas Cowboys were not paying that. Oh, my God. Oh, my gosh. The Cowboys were not paying that. Oh, my goodness. That's stupid. Cowboys are not paying that. And that's probably, and that's probably what happened. So, Cowboy fans, if y'all think at 32 years old that Von Miller is worth $20 million a year, okay, you have every right to be mad. But uh, uh, there's a lot of people that don't think Dak Prescott is worth the $40 million he's getting. And a lot of that is because the Cowboys screwed that up. So, oh, my goodness. So, so I guess <sighs> that's been so far the bad news. Let's look at some of the good news. I guess it like, like I said earlier, it might be glass half full, but, um, so the Cowboys re-sign LVE on the cheap. That's great. I, I, I if you watched my old, uh, if you watched my free agents video, I was saying, I think five million, five million a year. They got them for three. So, good job. Um, resign Dorrance Armstrong. I told y'all they were gonna do that. I told y'all they were gonna do that. Um, James Washington. Now that one was a surprise. I thought he played really well in, in Pittsburgh. I don't know what kind of player he is. Um, I ought to watch the film study to uh, to see what um, what kind of player he is and, and how he plays. But, yeah, man, I, that was a surprise. So now I'm still trying to figure out why we haven't signed Malik Turner. It, like... <laughs> And then, and then, so Cedric Wilson left. Cedric Wilson is going to Miami. I listen. I would. My goal was if we were going to get rid of Amari, we got it. Then we got to me. We got to keep Gallup and Cedric. But did you see what Cedric Wilson is getting paid? <laughs> I think he's getting twelve million. I think he's getting twelve million a year. If I if I don't uh let me see. He's getting it said it's three years. It's three years twenty two twenty two million, which means it's about it's about seven million a year. I think Cowboys could have kept him on that number. Four million, seven million, seven million. So yeah. Hmm. Hmm. That's funny. That's that's I guess seven million was too much. Or maybe and then sometimes y'all listen. Believe it or not, and you know what? This is gonna go into my second part. This is gonna go into the second part of this podcast. First part was on the free agency. Free agency up on up to this point. Here's the second part. We have got to realize that these are not the 90s Cowboys. Some of these players don't want to play for the Cowboys. They do not want to play for the Cowboys. Now, a lot of that might be animosity that the Cowboys probably told them that they were going to um, draft them, and then they didn't. Maybe it's just cowboy hatred because we know that's a real thing. But this this is not the Cowboys of the 1990s, y'all. And sometimes these players don't want to play for us. Maybe Cedric Wilson was thinking about the money. Maybe he was like... I'm taking the first part. And then, hey, like Stephen A. say, 
There is absolutely nothing wrong with Miami Beach. I mean, it is, listen, Cedric Wilson, hey, more power to you, bro. There is absolutely nothing wrong with uh, Miami Beach. Miami Beach is, is very nice, if you will. Miami Beach is nice. So, you know, it is what it is. Um, Trying to think, man. It's... I just, I just, it's funny to me. It's funny, but it's, it's, it's funny, but it's necessary. How, how some of these NFL players, how they, how they go through things, but we are not the team in the nineties and we can't expect everybody wants to be a cowboy. Now, granted, there's speculation coming out that, um, Von Miller's first choice was Dallas. Like I said, for those of y'all who are hiding under a rock, Von Miller has a home in Texas. Von Miller is from Texas. He is Texas born. So trust me when I say he wanted to come to Dallas, but what I'm starting to realize with a lot of these NFL players is that they understand they're not going to play this game for a very long time. And they understand that the money that they're making is once in a lifetime type of money. And Von Miller made a business decision. <laughs> if you will. So we can't get mad at that. You know, we can't expect a lot of these players to love the Cowboys. We can't expect a lot of these players to love the Cowboys like we love the Cowboys. It's just not going to happen. They have families to feed. They have responsibilities. So if one team is willing to pay them, like, I mean, look at Deshaun Watson. Look at that trade. This dude just got. $250 $250 million. 100% guaranteed. One hundred percent guaranteed. Ladies and gentlemen of the jury, I ask you. <laughs> First of all, I mean, first of all, Browns. Shout out to the Browns. They are they are going for it, man. You got to respect teams that are like, this is what we going to do. And we don't care how y'all feel about it. But <laughs> it's funny, man. It's cool. It's good. It's good and it's funny. The uh the Cleveland Browns just they just told the NFL that we here. They got to get the most out of Miles Garrett because his contract extension is gonna be coming up soon. They got to get the most out of their running backs because running backs don't last in this league. They got to get the most of that offensive line. Now, the Browns the Browns have literally just in in, in a matter of a week has become one of the best teams in the NFL. Easy. They don't have any continuity, but they have a whole lot of talent. Um, I, I, I think about teams like the Steelers, the, um, the Chiefs, because I think the Chiefs picked up Juju Smith-Schuster like they need another great wide receiver to have. Ravens. Um, you have to throw Miami in there because it's Miami. Shoot, the Raiders made, made some moves. You look at the teams... 
it, you have to wonder why is your destination not very glamorous, if you will. Because I look at the Atlanta Falcons. I'll, now, I will say this about the Falcons. I find, it, I find it very hard to believe that nobody wants to play for the Falcons. Nobody wants to live in Atlanta. Atlanta's nice. It's, it's a nice place. Well, there's a little bit schizophrenic, but it's a nice place. But then you have to get deeper. The politics. Politics of Atlanta. Not to mention the fact that Flowery Branch is not even in the same county as Mercedes-Benz Stadium. So it's like, you mean to tell me we got to go to, we got to, we practice at Flowery Branch, but we play games literally in the heart of Atlanta. Let me see where Flowery Branch is. Hall County? I mean, something as simple as that. Something as as simple as that could could turn somebody off. It's it. Forty four hundred Falcon Parkway, Flowery Branch, Georgia. It's Falcons, man. Like <laughs> the star. I know in Dallas, the star is down the street. <laughs> you know what I mean? But I don't know. I'm just I'm just trying to figure out why nobody wants to play for the Falcons. We got strip clubs, we got food, we got women. I mean, we got attractions, we got women. <laughs> and we also got men, unfortunately. Um, but, you know, Arthur Blank seems like he's a great owner. I'm really, I'm really stuck on this, y'all. I'm really stuck on this. I am really stuck on this. Y'all tell me why the Falcons can't uh, can't bring anybody in. I mean, we it's we Hollywood East. I don't, anyway, anyway, I'm rambling now, y'all. Trying to get to my quota, but let's recap. Front office still don't know what the hell they doing. We got we we signed we signed some depth, no starters. We signed depth, and um, the Cowboys are not the team. We're not the nineties anymore. And a lot of team and a lot of players are taking that into account. What have we won? Y'all haven't won jack squat. Y'all haven't won jack squat, so why would I play for y'all? And it seems like y'all can't win. It seems like we can't win. Why, 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 why? I don't know. But um, <laughs> I don't know. Let's hope for the best. Free agency isn't over. Um, we need to sign J. Ron. I, the, the, the next big one, we got We got to get J. Ron Curse. Got to get J. Ron Curse. We don't get J. Ron Curse. That means either, either his agent is being um, difficult, either the coaches are, are watching the film and they're noticing maybe he's not as good as we thought he was. 
I don't know. But we need to sign J. Ron Curse. Um, we'll be back with y'all hopefully maybe this week, but definitely another episode next week. It's your boy Billy Mac, and I'll holler at y'all next time. Peace.